So in this video, we shall try to cover what is MTLS, uh, how, what are the different ingredients for an MTLS uh, communication, where to use it, where not to use it, most importantly, and why to use it. So all those topics, uh, very briefly, we shall be covering in this video. And before we proceed, uh, if you are coming here for the first time, I'll request you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. So without wasting any further time, let's quickly dive in. Hey everybody and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting system and solution design concept around security and that is MTLS or the Mutual TLS. So MTLS or Mutual TLS is a lot in discussion these days uh, due to microservices and all these distributed systems uh, coming into focus. Uh, but again, uh, it's not that much of a difficult concept uh, if you understand the basics. And that is what we are going to discuss today. So before we actually move into mutual TLS uh, or the MTLS concepts, uh, we need to understand three different uh, terms uh, or terminology. So uh, the first one uh, is of course the base of everything and that is your public key encryption. Yes. So public key encryption is basically a concept where we have uh, two different set of keys. Uh, one is called a private key and the other one is called a public key and uh, we can encrypt data with either of these keys and it can be decrypted uh, using only the other uh, part of the pair yes so that is your uh, public and private key the other thing that we need to understand uh, is a tls certificate so a tls certificate again we will see like what is a tls how is it different from ssl uh, very quick and briefly but before uh, a TLS certificate is uh, something uh, you can think of it like a wrapper or a container uh, that actually holds your public key. So out of the pair, the private key is stored securely within your uh, application server. Public key is something which is exposed to all the parties or stakeholders that are trying to communicate. Now, uh, how do we expose our public key? So that is usually done uh, using a TLS certificate. Now, the TLS certificate will hold the public key. Uh, it will also have a few more parameters uh, such as your uh, issuer, expiry, uh, issue date. Uh, so all those details are also uh, captured uh, along with uh, your public key. It's wrapped together and then it's presented out. So that's called a TLS certificate. So these are the S.509 certificates and they have different extensions which define like what's the use of these certificates. So the certificates, uh, they are like a very much common thing that is used across industry for different uh, purposes. So they are used for road signing, they are used for encryption, they are used for uh, SMIME, a lot of purposes and uh, those purposes are segregated using the extensions. So let me know in the comment section uh, if you want to know more around that I'll try to cover quickly uh, some area around that as well. So now uh, we have uh, we have the public and private key, uh, private key stored securely, public key being exposed out via TLS certificate. Now the third component or the ingredient uh, for this concept to work is your TLS handshake. And TLS handshake is something like uh, where the, these keys are validated, authenticated and out of these uh, symmetric keys generated which is used for your uh, uh, TLS session for the encrypted session that for data to progress. So this TLS handshake is uh, in itself a very interesting topic and basically like the one of the very ingredients is like how the key exchange works from a server to client or like uh, in MTLS client to server as well. And there are different approaches uh, for that that includes your RSA key exchange or your Diffie Hellman. So there are different ways. Uh, let me know again in the comment section uh, if you want to understand how the TLS handshake works out, how this uh, key exchange takes place uh, over in uh, an unencrypted uh, mode so i'll try to uh, put uh, put up with those as well all right coming back to the mtls let's understand one more thing uh, before we actually move further how is it different uh, but with your ssl so uh, whenever you visit an https site uh, you must be seeing there's a lock icon over there uh, for your uh, ssl or secure sorted layer now TLS are like the successor of this uh, SSL. I'm not sure if the uh, original SSL are being used anywhere. In most of the time, uh, different variants of TLS are being used. Uh, I think TLS 1.3 is the latest one uh, that has all the goods and advantages uh, of the protocol. Uh, SSL, I'm not sure if it is used uh, 
anywhere anyways these terms are used interchangeably between the ssl and the tls so in the current landscape uh, both the ssl and the tls they refer to the same thing uh, called a tls uh, certificate all right so as i mentioned i will not be moving into the detail of tls handshake uh, but just let's quickly understand what a tls handshake is uh, in a TLS handshake, uh, the client uh, tries to communicate with the server. The server presents its certificate and uh, the then the client validates and authenticates against that certificate. Where the server that is sending the certificate is authorized to use the certificate. Now there are certification authorities that actually issue these certificates to trusted parties uh, based on the different validations on uh, DNS or a host name. So all these things happen. And uh, uh, like once this process is completed and a certificate is authenticated, a session is generated. So in a normal TLS authentication, uh, basically there is only one party that has the server certificate uh, that presents it out. Uh, but uh, what happened uh, in a MTLS or a mutual TLS is like uh, both the parties. Uh, now again, I'm not saying a client or a server here, uh, but both the parties are equal and they have uh, they have their own certificates. Uh, TLS certificates. So they have a, a set of a private and a public uh, uh, key pair which they store with themselves and then these uh, they present uh, their own certificates to the other party whenever they are trying to authenticate. So uh, in normal TLS what happens uh, when the client tries to communicate uh, to the server, the server presents certificates uh, that is being validated, session is generated. In a MTLS, uh, first uh, let's say there is a party 1, it tries to communicate with party 2. Uh, it tries, uh, whenever the first uh, communication happens, uh, the party 2 will present its own uh, TLS certificate, uh, which, par which party 1 will validate or indicate. And after this validation, the when the party 2 uh, certificates are validated, then uh, this, uh, the initiator, it will send its own certificate as well to the other party. Now again, this party will also like tries to validate or authenticate uh, these certificates and once that part is done, so there are different uh, protocols for key exchanges and generation of symmetry key uh, which we can cover uh, in a detail if you want, uh, let me know in the comment section. So, but the idea being like once these symmetry keys, both the party validate each other's certificates, that part is done, then we uh, initiate the communication. Now, how is it different uh, with your uh, normal TLS? In normal TLS, we only have one party that has the certificate. In MTLS, we both the parties have their own certificates which are validated. So this is a very standard concept and idea being wherever there are trusted devices uh, that you have to use, uh, this sort of thing happens. Now, one point to differentiate, this is outside or separate to the user authentication. Now, there might be a user authentication which is in AND or ALT condition uh, along with this MTLS or certificate based authentication. But the idea being these are two totally uh, different mechanisms of authenticating and uh, generally they are employed in an environment uh, which is like a zero trust environment. When we say zero trust environment, it's an environment where we don't trust the user or the device or any of the uh, communicating node. So for those reasons, we uh, authenticate the devices and the users uh, or like whatever node that is communicating separately. And this is like one of the very prominent areas. Now, uh, within a TLS, there are different variants. Uh, if you might have seen uh, 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.3 1 being the latest as far as I recall. And uh, the, so if you are building up any of the new system, uh, you should go for uh, 1.3. There have been some issues with the older uh, different protocols, uh, prominent ones being your uh, renegotiation or your delayed authentication. So all those have been fixed uh, with the 1.3. So any system that you are building up new, uh, go with the minimum version of a TLS 1.3. All right, so one more uh, quick difference. Uh, all these certificates are issued by a certificate uh, authority or a root certificate which signs off these certificates. In case of a SSL or a TLS based authentication where only the server has a certificate, uh, they are generally issued by a certifying authority. The certifying authority being common and like widely available. Every computer on the internet knows these uh, common certificate authorities and that's why I trust those. But in general for all the MTLS based authentication, the ideal way of doing that is like we create our own certificate authority. 
so how we do that is we create a root certificate uh, that is actually issued to sign all the child certificates now the root certificate is known to both the parties uh, or the stakeholders uh, which are interacting in the communication so they can trust that but this root certificate is separate to the public certification authorities so that's why it's generally uh, normally plan uh, for your infra deployment so one of the other variant of mtls that you might already be using without knowing is your certification uh, certificate authentication uh, that we have in your uh, web applications and basically like we define the certificates uh, which are required to access the secured area so that also use more or less a similar uh, technology on how it works out now a very important topic where should you use it so uh, you should use uh, where whenever you are having distributed uh, system distributed services microservices distributed systems uh, all communicating together with the, each other let's say your engine its instances or a lot of any of these uh, distributed systems or microservices you should employ uh, this mtls based authentication so that applies to your kubernetes cluster as well uh, so wherever there are different nodes and you want to ensure that only the rightful nodes or the endpoints should connect you should have this mtls so let's try to understand where should you use mtls uh, based mechanism authentication so it is useful in a lot of scenarios it helps to prevent a lot of different types of attack that includes uh, but not limited to your phishing spoofing uh, credential snuffing mad in the middle a lot of those things are prevented and the reason being uh, the keys are exchanged using the key exchange algorithms and your keys apply private keys never actually leave your uh, system so that's why it helps out restrict a lot of lot of these uh, attacks one very immediate question that would come to your mind is like if it is that much beneficial why not use it for uh, all of the web well the question is right theoretically it is possible but practically it is not possible and the reason for this is very simple if you have a small landscape if you have a small infrastructure a limited set of services let's say for a corporate system a limited set of employees it's possible uh, for a given service for a given server for a given application you have your certificates that you use uh, but just think of it uh, billions of user using those for billions of sites billions of applications uh, so that is practically not possible to issue all these certificates uh, to all the users now again uh, they have to be created or issued by all these organizations who are owning the sites owning the servers so that is practically not possible and that's the sole reason like why it is not uh, used throughout the normal function of a tls uh, the why tls ssl is employed is uh, there are three major things uh, that it helps to prevent first is your phishing or spoof page uh, if if i am claiming to be google.com the client should be able to validate okay uh, i am a i am google <laughs> although it's a big thing but yeah the client should be able to validate like whatever uh, i am claiming to be that's part one the second part is like uh, the data transmission it should be encrypted and nobody should be able to listen to what, like what data is being uh, sent out that's part two third part over here is like uh, data should not be modified if uh, whatever i'm requesting so all uh, this in general uh, the client should be able to do and that is achievable uh, by your normal tls uh, mechanism uh, for a few systems where you want to achieve a more higher level of security for all those cases we employ your mtls authentication so i'll uh, close the video now uh, not gone into those details i just wanted to apprise of the basic details around uh, mtls uh, let me know if you want to go into any of the detailed uh, points uh, detailed sections within the mtls or a tls uh, tls handshake whatever just let me know in the comment section i hope you liked the video uh, if it helped you out in any way uh, if you learned anything new uh, press the thumbs up button do let me know uh, that helps to motivate me a lot believe me and uh, if you are coming here for the first time subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything hope to see you soon and have a very great day